You can be that evil, okay, and you can be um, that definitive in your stance on another human being, okay, then you have much more issues than the stock. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com weekend update show. Uh, hope everybody is doing great. Um, a lot of stuff going on, obviously. Um, look, I, I, I want to I, I wanna make this perfectly clear. Um, obviously, the big news over, over the weekend, and obviously from Thursday night into Friday, was... Uh, the COVID news, right? The COVID news for uh, the President of the United States. And uh, look, I, I have, I am in belief that, I, I always believe that no matter who's in office, it doesn't make a difference. Democrat, Republican, you have to respect the office, okay? Uh, no matter how much you like or hate or disagree, we're all human beings, right? We're all born exactly the same way. We're all built uh, pretty much the same way, our DNA, our blood, everybody's the same, okay? So it doesn't make a difference if you love the president, if you hate the president, if you're wishing the demise on another human being, let me say this as, as nicely as possible. You're a world-class dickhead, right? That's the, that's the nicest way I could possibly say it. There's, after death, there's no coming back, okay? I don't care what your beliefs are. As far as I understand, there is no coming back. So the idea that people can wish the ultimate demise on another human being is absolutely insane, okay? And if you are that type of human being, number one, I'm not messing with you. And number two, you really have to find some serious purpose in your life. You really do. Uh, because again, if you can be that evil, okay, and you can be um, that definitive in your stance on another human being, Okay, then you have much more issues than the stock market. Okay, I think I think that's the best way of saying it. Um, so hopefully everybody who's who's been affected with COVID, with diabetes, with HIV, with any any with with cancer, with any type of uh, fight for their lives, we should be saying prayers for them. Okay, no matter who they are, saying prayers for them, even if you don't know them. Um, and try again to be a normal human being. Again, life is very, very hard. Trading is very, very hard. But at least if you live your life a little bit righteous, nobody's saying everybody's perfect and everybody's squeaky clean, but at least if you can have a little bit, a little bit, right? Just a tiny morsel of sympathy and empathy and, and all that good stuff to another human being, you'll find your life to be a little bit easier on a day to day basis. So again, just kind of my little thought process here. I uh, kind of wanted to just say it because I've seen so many negative things uh, all, you know, for the last couple of days. It's just, it's embarrassing that this is, you know, this is where we are uh, as a society. So hopefully uh, everybody who's fighting uh, any type of di disease or any type of illness, may God be uh, in your corner. So uh, let's talk about the market. So obviously uh, a funny thing uh, came into the, you know, came alongside this masterful rally that we were having uh, three, four days in a row, we, you know, we reclaimed supply, we built, we had some really good aggressive value uh, to the upside. Uh, Thursday night into Friday session was setting up for a phenomenal, an absolute phenomenal uh, measured potential run, okay? And obviously in this type of environment, and we say this all the time, expect the unexpected, okay? You, you really have to. And, you know, now we have so much uncertainty uh, in life, right? We have COVID news. We have uh, an election that is uh, 30 days away, right? Basically a month away. Uh, we have all of these different uncertainties. Uh, the idea that you can go into the stock market every single day uh, with eyes wide shut is absolutely asinine. And I, I think we've been discussing this for a very, very long time that Number one, this market has ridiculous amounts of range, okay? Uh, because of the volatility and uncertainty and all these different moving parts, we have the ability, especially for us intraday traders, you know, I go home flat uh, pretty much every night. Um, 
because of number one, the uncertainty overnight, but number two, we don't need to have exposure overnight. You know, you could, if you want to trade Amazon, you have a 150 point range throughout the day. If you want to trade, you know, Tesla, you know, before the split, you are having $70 ranges. So you don't need to be right overnight. You don't need to have that exposure overnight. But if you if you absolutely need to, right? You absolutely need to have exposure overnight. You have to have some hedges, okay? If you're long any Nasdaq 100 names, uh, you know, short some cues against your positions. If you you know if you're long the banks, take some spies against your position. Again, you need something number one to combat uh, the volatility. This rapid. Um, and rabid news cycle that we're getting, uh, all this disease talk, all this spread, uh, all this election talk. You literally can wake up, you know, Thursday, you know, Thursday, Friday night, uh, Friday morning, thinking, "Where my God, the future is going to gap up," and you turn around, and you see, "Hey, Donald Trump got uh, COVID, his wife got COVID, a whole bunch of uh, you know GOP members got COVID," and the next thing you know, you're staring, you know, you're staring at a 500 point decline pre market. So I think it's very, very important if you are trading overnight and i think right now it's a very very fluid time we've been talking about this non-stop but if you have to take exposure overnight uh please you know again be be an adult okay understand that again hope is not a process uh take some protection right um you know sleep better at night so if you are long you got to be short something the cues uh you know the spy something you know something just to protect yourself from one of these crazy headlines, and obviously Friday, everybody woke up uh, the craziest headline of all: Trump has, has COVID, uh, his wife has COVID. Um, you know, obviously, it's a very, very serious situation because of his age, because unfortunately, uh, his weight. Okay, he's, I think he's, he's you know, a little bit overweight. Um, so I think the idea that you know it could be one, two, three, take a couple of aspirin, take some Tylenol, he'll be fine by Monday. It was obviously ambitious, and as the day grew on, you started seeing all these different headlines. Obviously, he was transported right away uh, to a medical facility, a medical facility hospital. Again, even if it was a very strong case or light case, again, he's the president of the United States. He's he's going to need to get uh, the world class treatment. But as you started hearing uh, throughout the day, uh, his I think his uh, oxygen level started dropping, uh, which was very very serious. Um, he started taking some I think some Regeneron drug. Um, and as of last night, I, I didn't have a chance to read anything in depth, but as of last night, I believe that he, his, he had some fever, he had some temperature, uh, and he was doing a little bit better. That's as of last night. Again, it's a little bit early in the morning. This is today. I haven't had a chance to, to read everything. But I, I think you know, this is a day or this is a, a, a Sunday ahead of a new week that, yes, I, you know, I have a game plan, right? I have an opinion what should happen. But depending on his progress, okay, you know, we could legitimately see futures come, you know, six o'clock this evening, uh, cash futures start the session up or down 500 points. This is just the reality. If he's, if he's progressing and resting and doing better, you're, you're, you're going to have a big rise in the futures. Uh, if you're, you know, if they're talking about, you know, like the headline read, he's not out of the woods. Uh, we're concerned, but you know we're, we're trying our best. You know, if you're going to start seeing any more he negative headlines, and hopefully that's not the case, um, you're going to have a really, really aggressive move down uh, in the future. So, despite where we are technically, okay, and you look at the scoreboard throughout the week, uh, the Dow uh, was up about a little less than two percent uh, despite Friday's sell-off, and the S&P and the Nasdaq were up about a point. Uh, uh, one and a half percent or so. So the, the scoreboard looked good. And despite Friday's uh, sell-off, and again, again the, the word sell-off, I think is, uh, is pretty exaggerated. I think a lot of people got spooked out by a lot of things that were happening on Friday. And the word sell-off, I mean, 300 points in the Dow is far from a sell-off. If you guys just remember, just going to March, we had several 3,000-point declines, a whole bunch of 2,000-point declines. So the idea that 300-point decline in the Dow was a sell-off, Let's kind of not, you know, let, let's 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 kind of reserve that, um, you know, reserve that talk for something much more uh, exaggerated, like we saw in March. So I, I think where we are technically is fine, despite the pullback, uh, especially in the queues. You can see here we are still above. We you know we held we held this rising twenty right, which is a bullish thing, uh, and we're still above the ten day moving average, which is roughly around two seventy three. That's a good thing. Now again. Something comes out, uh, you know, throughout the you know throughout the day that Trump is is not doing great. 
uh, or whatever the case may be. Again, this means nothing, right? We could open down at 268. We could open, you know, down at 265, right? Or if he's doing great, we could open up at 283. So the idea of the technical analysis just for today, right? Just literally for today, because of this ever-changing situation with the president's health, I think is almost irrelevant. I, I think what is relevant is kind of putting together a game plan for Monday morning, uh, regardless if the futures gap up 500 points or gap down 500 points. Obviously, uh, if you look at Friday's value before the news came out, there was a lot of names that I really liked, and they were all COVID names. Again, we talked about, uh, if, you, if you go back to uh, Thursday's video, right? We loved ZM, loved ZM, right? I loved Docu. Right, we love Docu. You know, again, these happen just to be names that were breaking out of ranges or kind of reclaimed levels. So it, Friday came, and once we saw that news, there was no bigger catalyst than you can find, especially at these stay-at-home names, than the president getting COVID. Right. So we'll get to the pivots in a second. These things exploded. The COVID names uh, were the early theme. Uh, that was our point of reference. Uh, that was our concentration levels. Uh, at pre-market morning strategy, and they played out very, very well. But I think going into this week, um, there is going to be good value in either direction. If he makes this miraculous recovery, and hopefully, again, anybody that has COVID makes a miraculous recovery very, very quickly, okay? So I'm hoping, I'm pushing that out to the, to the universe, not just about one person, it's about everybody uh, that's fighting this nasty, uh, nasty virus. Uh, and again, you could, you could sit there, oh, it's only a flu. Okay, it, it's all fun and games until it happens to you. I think that's the best way of saying it, okay? Uh, I'm not judging anybody. Everybody has, you know, if you want to believe what you want to believe, again, that's fine. But it, it's all fun and games until it actually happens to you. So with any disease, again, good positive vibes are going out to everybody. But I think what's happening this week is we're going to have a lot of good value uh, with these COVID plays, both longs and shorts, if he makes this uh, really great fast recovery, the doctors are saying he's resting, he should be fine next week, you're going to see these things really sell off because, again, this will really demonstrate that, hey, with the right drugs, with the right care, and again, obviously, he's the president versus uh, Joe Blow sitting there in Bismarck, North Dakota, Okay, so he's going to get the world-class facilities, world-class treatment uh, versus just the average Joe. But it does show that it could ultimately be contained, which could be a good thing. And you'll see a really aggressive sell-off in these um, stay-at-home names. However, if this is prolonged, and again, this is you know the barometer is set to the leader of the free world, if there's a problem, you're going to see these things really explode. And again, we have to be uh, very, very, um, you know, very, very open-minded to trade both sides of the market. Uh, we have to understand that again with the election. How is this going to affect the election? Um, how is the market going to treat uh, not only regular election volatility but the presidential health? involved with it. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And oh, by the way, we're getting a really aggressive natural rise now uh, in COVID cases. So everything is setting up for a tremendous whirlwind of uh, exaggerated price action. And I, I really, and this is my advice, again, you could take it or leave it. Try to trade, as, especially for all you guys who trade um, in the intraday ranks, Try to trade as aggressively as you can, and this is what I, I kind of convey every single day in the live webinar. Try to trade as aggressively as you can in the first three, four hours of the day, just about, you know, till about one o'clock Eastern time. And if you guys notice what happens around two o'clock, there's always these crazy headlines, whether it's stimulus, deal on, deal off, COVID news, health, like everything is going, whatever they could throw at you at two o'clock, that's what makes the market completely erratic. And you see a lot of people giving back their days and getting really, really hurt. So my, my just again, my advice, especially in this last 30, 30 days or so uh, leading up to the election, uh, try to trade aggressively, as aggressively as the value there is uh, between 930 at one o'clock, right? Watch the price action, kind of set your opinion, initial opinion for the next day. Uh, try to limit, if not completely remove uh, overnight exposure. Because again, we're only one headline away from your complete inventory to go get destroyed. And again, if you have to, absolutely have to uh, trade overnight 
and have positions overnight, make sure you're either uh, hedged, right, via ETFs, uh, or if you are, for example, long overnight, you know, try to do it via options, you know, on, on, the, on the covered side, because at least you know uh, your maximum exposure. So that's it. So uh, really solid week. Um, you know, Friday, surprisingly, because of the unfortunate news, health news of, of the president, you had a lot of exaggerated moves to the downside. Um, the one thing we kept on reiterating all the time was, you know, the market is good. So anytime you see the market is good and they're holding very, very aggressive levels, we always want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. And anytime you get um, any single time you get an opportunity to get a gap down, okay? If you guys remember on every video when, when the market's strong, I'm always saying, hey, if the market guides are listening, please give us a, a gap down. Because again, what usually happens is with it, when there's a strong structural tape, when they gap it down, what they usually do is number one, they trap uh, very, very early, aggressive, naive shorts because they don't understand the macro level is still good. Uh, but when you keep on hearing the same news over and over again, you still get getting the same gap down. This is just a really good reason for the bulls to defend those levels and take it higher. So when we got that gap down, um, and I said, look, obviously the value is to the upside. Okay, anytime we get a gap down is to the it's to the upside because again, just the average natural average true range is already put into those names. But when you get uh, but when you get a gap down, okay, over uh, a headline that ultimately, you know, ultimately can be repaired, okay, there's much more value. So I said, obviously, uh, the upside is the value. Uh, Trump COVID news should get COVID names going. Right away, uh, we turn to the COVID names. Uh, they will be our prime focus, obviously, good morning. And if you look at uh, pretty much every single stock, for the exception of Rocket Mortgage and uh, BIGC, I just like that setup there. If you look at everything, Everything that I posted, uh, it was number one to the upside. We didn't have not one single short. Uh, everything was to the upside. Everything was related to the stay at home theme. And it worked out very, very well. Um, ZM, obviously we talked about it uh, the night before. Uh, it reclaimed that uh, two, excuse me, they reclaimed that 482 level. And I said, look, any build above 484, uh, 484 that was the previous day's high, could get very aggressive based on the five-day confirmation. And oh, by the way, you got the greatest catalyst of all, the unfortunate uh, news from, from, uh, from the president's health. And it, it went absolutely nuts. I mean, and, th and that's the whole point, guys, why you need to do your research. You have to have an opinion overnight. So we talked about, you know, we talked about this level here, the five-day the night before. Uh, here is the level that it got rejected off twice. It finally got, re it finally reclaimed the five-day moving average. Uh, here was the 484, right? Here was the whole 484 level, right? And it just absolutely went nuts. Uh, I thought I had a shot to get to 509. It went to 507 and a half, but in just an incredible, incredible move. And that really set the tone for the day uh, one by one by one. And we started putting these things into the feed. Uh, Netflix, again, not the, you know, not the traditional, obviously the greatest beneficiary of, of, of any COVID is going to be Zoom. We all use Zoom. So uh, the idea that uh, the stay at home plays, this is going to be always the one you want to go to first. But you start going one by one. So Netflix uh, 522 uh, sneaky area needs to build. And again, it didn't go green like the rest of them, but Netflix still gave you a move. So here is the, here is the whole five what was the number I said? Excuse me. Uh, five, where is it? 522. Sorry about that. So here's the, the whole 522 area. Uh, went to, it went to 526 and change. And then obviously when the market reversed, it reversed with it. But again, you had some pretty good flow. Uh, the, the names were definitely working. The thesis was definitely working. Um, I caught FSLY we were watching for like a week. Uh, I caught this thing pretty well. A uh, hundred needs to build. Again, FSLY, I believe... I forgot exactly what the correlation is with with TikTok. They're either a TikTok customer or something like that. But it has to again TikTok stay at home. People, you know, little kids watching those damn TikTok videos. Again, same thing. So FSLY uh, went nuts. Went absolutely nuts. Um, you know, took out this whole channel here uh, and went to like 102 and change. So again, the stay at home theme. Uh, was playing out very well. I also caught this TDOC. I usually don't trade this thing, but again, these things are just waking up one by one. And I said TDOC, again, same play. On watch, red to green. Note, this isn't a pivot, just momentum on the stay-at-home COVID plays. The, the value pivot is 225. And TDOC did exactly the same thing. So TDOC 
uh, goes red to green, uh, takes out 225 and goes to 228. Again, nice move there. Absolutely nice move there. So I was pretty happy about that. Uh, BIGC never got to 90. Uh, Roku was, was kind of odd. So Roku takes out the 201, 52 week high. And again, you can make an argument. This is a stay at home play, right? So it takes out 201 and it goes to 203 and change, but it wasn't like one of those gangbuster 52 week high breakouts. It was very methodical. Um, I personally didn't take this one. I just didn't, I, I didn't like the volume. And although it went up like two, two and a half dollars, I just didn't like the volume here. And again, it got rejected off supply and ultimately went lower. Obviously, if the market recovers, this thing looks, still looks good. But it was a very, very odd way for a stock to break out regardless. Uh, RKT uh, actually got stronger into the close. I kind of like this thing for uh, this week. You know, this it held up pretty well. Uh, Rocket Mortgage, again, took out the 23, went to 2310, uh, closed over the 23 level. This thing looks good. If this thing can confirm uh, Friday's price action and the market gets better, this thing could have a, a pretty big run. So let's keep an eye on this RKT for this week. Uh, dock you another. Again, another uh, another stay-at-home play. Uh, on watch, red to green. Note, this isn't pivot, just momentum. Uh, COVID plays, right? 224.50, 225 needs to build. Here was dock you. Right, so here was Docu. Here's a 224. Right, it's, it's the same candles. Right, so here it goes, red to green, takes out the 224, 50, 25, goes to 227, uh, and they were just working one after another after another. Uh, too low, big move here. They guided higher the pre uh, the previous night. Uh, 282 rejected twice. Needs to build for more experienced traders only. Obviously, anytime the market's down 500 points. Uh, not every single trade is right for everybody. 282 rejected twice. Uh, 285.50 was last night's highs for another point of reference. And Tulo went absolutely nuts. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught Tulo. So here's the two candles right here, 282, right? 282 were rejected twice. Here's 85 and a half, the after hours high. And this thing just absolutely went nuts, went to uh, 295. So huge move there. Uh, overstock never got to 82. I still, you know, I still like overstock for this week. Um, again, you can also make a case. This is a relative stay at home play, right? We had a pretty aggressive pivot uh, the previous day on. It got rejected off the 50. Uh, let's keep an eye on it for the next couple of days. If it can reclaim the 50, um, I think there's more upside there. So we'll definitely watch it. Uh, truly, I'm very surprised didn't go red to green. This is another uh, stay at home play. So we're definitely watching this thing uh, this week in case it wakes up. So again, yeah, I think that's the best way of saying it. Oh my God. When you get a $15 candle in like in minutes on ZM, I think an OMG, right? Not, not, not to, not to uh, channel the 13 year old girl on me, but OMG, right? Uh, FSLY went nuts, 509 on deck. And again, I, I think we had a really, really good game plan. I mean, I mean based on uh, what we saw, the information we gathered, uh, the research from the night before, and by the way, again, the biggest catalyst we could possibly have in that push into the stay at home plays, we actually got it. So Friday turned out to be uh, pretty good, you know, pretty good session. Um, you know, again, I'm very, very open minded. Uh, going into Monday uh, again, I think you know by the time you watch this video, uh, the futures probably will be already up uh, or down, probably three to five hundred points. And again, it's very very important to have an opinion on both sides for tomorrow. Um, again, don't be you know don't be tied into a bias. Don't, you know, stop falling in love with your stocks. Remember, you don't need to trade every single day. If you're, especially if you're an inexperienced, just new trader, getting your feet wet, this is all valuable screen time. These are things that even if you're not actively participating every single day, you can store in your mental Rolodex and keep it on file uh, for later use. So it's very, very important. Again, there's no egos involved. There is no bravado. It's all about value. It's all about safety and the conviction to put, up, to put on your process at will. Guys, have a great night. Uh, love each other again, folks. Just it's it's sometimes just that easy. Just just stop being that hateful, you know, you know, person who just just hates everybody. Just 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 smile, man. Just smile and live your life. We only have one life. We don't get a mulligan, guys. God bless. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on the field on Monday.